I've been holding my tongue thus far. We're talking about tools and what's current and what's relevant. So I have to, I couldn't let you go today without asking, where do you feel, and I know this is probably the most subjective question out, out there. I know everything you've shared so far, you've, you know, you've gone in and, and researched, um, and maybe you have researched this. I should probably stop pre-front loading your answer. Um, <laughs> artificial intelligence, where do you currently mm. think it lands in terms of as a tool for education, as a tool for, yeah, what, what, what are your thoughts in this particular space in terms of so So where? specifically in terms of education is mm. when you understand what I mean by education, people having a better grasp mm. of reality. Yeah. AI is a nifty tool for, I'm sure, something. Mm. Um but it's not going to do it's not going to have any meaningful effect on education truly it's irrelevant hmm. to education fundamentally it compounds it's a the full achievement thing in some way you're seeing people being able to write essays Absolutely. just by pumping the question <laughs> and it just pops out the essay for right, you and you're right. like i did my essay and it's like you did your essay sorry yeah right right no that's exactly Echoing. right is is if anything it's going to make the achievement problem worse mm. which you know you could look at that uh, in several ways i mean the, the 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 broken system we have is going to have to disappear one way or another. Mm -hmm. I tend to be more of a... I, when I've looked deeply at large-scale change, large-scale systems change, when I look at mm. that, I say, okay, the kind of burn-it-down thing is just mm -hmm. a recipe for disaster. <laughs> Whenever you destroy instead of create... You, you mm. really have to question what you're up to. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not skillful in the realm that you're destroying, that's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. So the challenge, and, and I refer to my friend Sharif Abdullah who talked about, uh, he wrote a book called Creating a World That Works for All. Mm. And, and he really talked about, you know, you have to create this parallel system that can step into the gap when the old system dies off or collapses or whatever it's mm -hmm. going to do. It's going to transform in some way. But you have to have these things that, that can fill the gap. You, mm -hmm. you can't just leave a void. I say, you know, power loves a vacuum or something like that. Anyway, you know, you, you, you can't just create a vacuum and expect good things to fill it. So a yeah. great example of that, um, Václav Havel wrote the, the, the uh, forward to Sharif's book. Mm -hmm. And Václav Havel talked about how uh, the reason that the 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 Czechoslovakian revolution was relatively nonviolent compared mm. to the, uh, this is the 90s when the after the Berlin Wall fell and the Soviet Union is falling apart and all that is there were a number of countries in the old Soviet Union that had revolutions. Mm -hmm. Most of them, all except one or two, were violent. Ceausescu mm. in I forget uh, Romania, I think that's it. Anyway, you know, very violent, very horrible, and and it was a devastating transition for most countries. Czechoslovakia had what they called the Velvet Revolution. Why? Mm. Because in 1970s, when the Soviets came in and suppressed an October Revolution in, I think, 71 or 72, Václav Havel and his companions who were leaders in that revolution were all put in the same jail. And they passed secretly passed around notes, and they wrote the constitution that would be put into place, <laughs> or the outline of it at least, uh, in the 90s when the opportunity finally arose. They mm. had something ready to fill the vacuum. And that's, yeah. that's part of the work I'm trying to do with these schools that are on the margins currently is I'm trying to say, hey, how can we have something that can fill, a, if the system starts to really collapse, like mm. we really have an opportunity and so, or or even if it's not collapse, if it's just like they invite us in, mm. how can we put ourselves in there in a way that doesn't compromise and destroy what we do well in the schools we already created, which are almost mm -hmm. entirely privately funded and you know, parent funded and not state owned uh, or state operated uh, because the state tends to destroy them. Uh, mm -hmm. which there's a, a, a whole bunch of historical examples of that. Um, so so they cr most of the people in that stage say, well, we've given up on, on any kind of government funding, so they create their own thing. But how can you create a parallel system that's not exclusive of that system? Mm -hmm. Now, it, it's good to have those there, because if there is truly a gap, they maybe can fill it. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if they have the capacity for that, but that would be a good thing. 
or if they were invited in, could we create versions of it that actually still have the, the, the real core principles that can make it work? And that's, that's why my work is really does, does go deep uh, uh, because I have to say, you know, we have to reconceptualize. We have to think about education, not just as delivery, but also uh, 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 social justice work or, or, or social change mm -hmm. work. And it is also fulfillment work. Is it personally uh, uh, enlightenment is a part oh. of education? How do you think about that? How do you create an organization or a, or a school organization that can actually enable enlightenment to happen? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> um, mm. But all those things are are valid ways of looking at education. And if you exclude one, and this is where the delivery model, it would be it wouldn't be bad on its own if it didn't exclude the other models. If you say a high stake standardized test is the only way to be acknowledged for the for for your learning, mm. then you've cut off. A lot of all different these other dimensions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so it it is a complicated issue. <laughs> it's not a mm. small task, but it is something that that I'm looking at. How do we create the parallel opportunities? Infiltrate the mainstream. Do all those things, and 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 even transformation from the inside. I'm a fan of that too. Is yeah. Well, the way I see it is, is it's almost like you know when you double clutch. It's like you've already <laughs> got one gear sort of spinning to catch when you disengage from that other gear into the next right. gear. Exactly. Um, it's sort of Good what analogy. I see your um your inspirations being in the space. And it makes a lot of sense because yeah, I guess symptomatically you can see some of the things are splitting at the seams. Yeah. So yeah. what is that is a re and that's the opportunity that you're describing there. Aside from us.